Uh, hi, everybody. Brian here from quantlabs.net. I uh, want to go over <coughs> um, the Redis query. Um, I'm always doing this every so often. Go on my YouTube channel on Quant Labs, go under the playlist, and you will find a playlist for Redis. So I've been using it for many years. Always come back to it um, right here Redis, NoSQL, and Memory Database. So that's the playlist. Um, I always come back to it, always find some surprising um, use cases for it. So I went in I'm trying to compare Redis performance against others. Um, any uses of Redis in the world of trading or algorithmic trading. So here is uh, the HFT guy at uh, dhftguy.com, developer in London. And his article is called, What's the Best NoSQL? Database Cassandra versus MongoDB versus Redis versus Elasticsearch. So there's this chart here under different use cases. Um, so if you're trying to use data in column, and columns is an S, uh, ASV, uh, sorry, a uh, CSV, Cassandra, AWS, Dynamo, Google Big Table, searchable documents, the only one that comes up is Elasticsearch, uh, object storage, AWS S3, Google S3, and then we get into other areas that may be more useful. So for instance, if you're looking for a graph database, and, um, a graph database would be the equivalent, um, as far as I know in my research, uh, in the world of trading, a best example of a graph database would be uh, SecDB from that's uh, the internal database of um, Goldman Sachs, where you put a trade in. It's basically a risk management database. It will assess the um, risk of that trade against the entire portfolio across the enterprise of Goldman Sachs. It's built around graph database technologies. Uh, so it's one example. <clears throat> so we have here Neo4j and Orient DB. And then we get into our need of save a key value. So we have key value store. We have Re uh, React, which is built in Erlang. Um, put up an article on which uh, programming languages now to avoid. Erlang is one of them. And of course, we have Redis, which is built in C, true open source. Memcached. Um, there was an article that showed that Redis outperforms Memcached, which is basically uh, sits on top of MySQL. <clears throat> and then we get into the more older databases like Tree Databases, Berkeley, DB, and then others. Here we have Aerospike, which is paid. We have Volt, DB, which is an in memory graph database that's paid. Um, Postgres. Uh, sharding, such a uh, Citus DB, rethink, which went bankrupt, and Mongo, which this guy says is not really a database, but um, uh, it's more of a freemium now. So you have no SQL open source, but you also have, if you want to, for instance, use um, Redis or the in memory capabilities, you have to pay for that uh, from Mongo uh, last I checked, which is about a year ago. All right, so let's check out some of the real world examples of where um, where Redis is used. Now I'm on obviously GitHub here. We have here, now you're gonna find two next examples are really regarding cryptocurrency. So if you ever wanted to use an exchange server via BTC, so basically um, that's the name of the project via BTC exchange server on on GitHub. Um, basically, what is uh, according to the description here, trading backend with high speed performance, designed for cryptocurrency exchanges. Okay, it can support up to ten thousand trades per second and real time user market data notification through WebSockets. So here's our databases that they've used: um, MySQL, which is just really relegated to an operation log, including user balance history, order history, and trade history. 
then we get into the more necessary functions of using a sentinel which is basically another way of saying a cluster of redis servers acting as one and it can be used to save market data so that's the critical stuff and we have the messaging service so here's the architecture um, so web api and then he's also added the um, application layer we have here a match server which is built for mysql pricing server for redis and kafka which is the messaging layer uh, that interfaces with the match server and we have the data server as well and then we have the web sock in the general storage layer so that's pretty well it now here's my thing kafka is a very heavy uh, library that i've played around with um i think personally that Redis can serve all needs here and i'll get into that in a little bit but i just want to show you the, the um example project here i find this project quite interesting if you ever wanted to build out your own uh, cryptocurrency exchange server um next one we have uh gdax multi-process currency network platform i should help to know what languages is built in so just hang on here for a second um i wouldn't be surprised if this is c um, so it can only run on Ubuntu. That's what it's been tested for. There's a JSON. Let me just see what we got here. I'm always curious. So in here, we have, let's say, the match engine, which is C. We have read history, C. Uh, SQL uh, okay we have the go through the market price C of course we're using high Redis the layer for Redis alert center so it's all done in C okay so the next project we have here again on github the project name is uh, trading underscore package you may want to do a search on GDAX, GDAX, multi-process currency network platform. Package implements an, a level two order book from a web socket. Portfolio manager and network cycle calculator for the GDAX exchange. Easy plugin extensibility for trading strategies and strong performance of multi-core machines. I've been using it for the past few weeks to manage some of the personal strategies, but it still has a number of kinks to be worked out. Sample strategies included. So in here, it says the installation. So it's needing Redis to have a Redis server locally. Um, so that's how you get that running on a Mac. And we'll do a virtual setup as well. Um, some, some notes here. Again, I believe this is C as well. Let me check that out. Let me just verify that. So if I go under uh, trading package, mm, 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 order book, let's say, oh, it looks like it's a Python pack uh, project. Let's see here, portfolio. Yeah, it's all Python, it looks like. Scripts, Python, that's pretty cool. Exchange WebSocket, Python. Visualization, Python. Okay, now that is cool. And we know it's in Redis. So <clears throat> um, just some examples to be used. Okay. Now, just my opinion on all these projects. So many coming out now. It's crazy on, on GitHub to keep up with them. Um, but I'm sure you know how to use Google and GitHub searching. Now let's talk about the performance of Redis. So I came across two articles here. Um, Real-time streaming for trading with Fix and Redis. And should we use Redis as a main database for trading server? Now, this is what people don't get. I'm going to kind of critique this. So this is on Quora. Should we use Redis as a main database? First qu uh, answer, most popular is MySQL. <clears throat> and then using OLTP workloads, which is in memory. Uh, it's not memory, but it should be perfectly okay for you. 
Um, that's true, but mm, I wouldn't go in MySQL. I'd stick with Redis. Fast buffer pool, writes transaction logs fast. And then there's Maria. Obviously, this guy has the same view I have of MySQL. They don't trust Oracle, which is the owner. Um, so and so forth. The second question, Res Couchbase and Aerospike are in memory, are fast. Don't have a properties and they can be used as caches, but not authoritative data sources. So I'm going to uh, dispel that. That came out uh, 2016, uh, January 2016. So there has been some major updates with Redis to uh, go through and I'll show you what they are. Okay, so primary is a bad choice. Built primary for in-memory, that's not true anymore. Um, MySQL has the parameters can be optimized to serve uh, you traffically easily. It sounds like I want to use this for um, a web da database. Okay. Um, I don't even know what the question is, to be honest. Uh, so here's embedded in the comment. Okay, here's another view of using Redis with fix for real-time streaming. So um, it can be used, obviously, fixed messaging written in C++, and then other implementations using the popular languages like Python, Java, and Go. Um, blah, 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 blah. We looked into using Redis as a broker most because Redis implements a PubSub messaging paradigm. We've talked about that in my playlist quite a bit. Uh, publishers, subscriber, we expect a low volume of information. Our data can fit memory since tools like Celery also use Redis in the same way. And it was already part of, their, of our infrastructure. That's good enough reasons, I guess. A few interesting properties of this PubSub system. Now, I can verify this. Uh, I find this an important design pattern, but there's many other design patterns which I've actually moved off of using uh, hash sets. Um, you can also use L push and L range as well, but you're not getting the event processing. <clears throat> so in here we have quick fix, different caches of Redis right here. So I guess we can use this AWS Elastic Cache for Redis um, as an option. And this is connect to QFS using a connector and using HTTP. Fine, fine, fine. Okay, let's talk about more on the PubSub stuff as one of the design patterns. Um, where is it? Uh, where are you? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay. Um... Oh, okay, so this is about PubSub, Redis PubSub. Multiple clients can publish and be subscribed to the same channels without additional overhead. Very, very true. Dispatch is responsible for handling incoming messages, request channels, and posting any incoming fixed messages uh, from an external party to response channels. Uh, receives a fixed message only. The message is only posted to a response channel with a particular CID so that only one client receives a response to the message sent. So basically how this works in a nutshell is this. We have your external source pushing let's say fixed messages, any messages, data, whatever, into um, here which is the um, quick fix, fix layer. Um, personally I'd be using something else but uh, whatever. Fixate's another one. Um, and then it will interface with uh, producer and consumer, which is another way of saying publisher or subscriber. So we can have multiple clients connecting into this um, interface. So we could have multiple subscribers here um, based upon searching for specific um, criteria. Um, so X, Y, Z. And um, yeah, and it'll only list out all the data related to those particular um, topics we call them, I guess, of X, Y, and Z. And then we can connect them individually into individual clients on the backend controller. And overall, it's very little overhead for this, which is very, very cool. Um, so 
throughput latency during load testing we can get up to 139 milliseconds per message consistent with 100 concurrent users test set was only deployed with one broker some of the pitfalls in uh, storing messages when a message is posted to Redis the message is not actually stored in the database we need to find a way to record our messages we choose to save the content of messages in a Redis key um, Let's see what else we have here. I think these are very valid um, disadvantages. Messages posted to a specific channel, nobody is listening. Uh, the message will be lost, so we can't guarantee messages will be consumed. To avoid this, we implement a retry operation and send the message until one subscriber listens to it with a sensible period of time. Okay, so that's really got nothing to do with the uh, limitation of Redis. <laughs> Um, duplicate message in a cluster environment where multiple instances of our broker component are running at the same time. Each instance could send the same message more than once, so we can get an atomic short-lived lock when receiving message to discard any potential duplicates. That's true. Um, best thing to do is just to have one client uh, subscribe to whatever per topic. Um, I don't know why they would have here. Let's say duplicate multiple instances of our broker component running at the same time. I don't know why you would do that, um, maybe for redundancy, but um, there's different ways to go about that where you could just log it. Um, and there's other t techniques. Okay, so we've got that. Now let's talk about modules. This is a new feature in uh, Redis 4. Um, Redis 4 with the Redis Labs have got some very cool uh, uh, modules. So when you look at these, um, how it works is quite ingenious. I don't know where they get the idea from, but essentially you have the Redis Core version. Now remember, this is true open source. So you have the Redis Core version of Redis, and then you can build on top of it using uh, the C templates uh, for each module that you want to interface to live on top of uh, your core Redis instance. So for instance, let's say this neural Redis. So you could compile this module as a separate um, object file or binary object that will sit in conjunction with the core binary version of Redis and they can work together and um, live together. But yet um, you're not uh, adding on bloat to the uh, core version of Redis because uh, you want to keep it light, so you only want to add the modules that you want, and uh, let's go through them. So we have the first one, trainable neural network as a data type. Uh, you can imagine the power of that, Redis search for full text search, Redis SQL, so if you want SQL capabilities, JSON, Redis cell, it provides rate limiting in a single uh, command. Now, I, I mentioned this before, I haven't really played with it, but going back to our original um, document here, uh, let me just find it, this one right here, you're now got a key value store for Redis, but now you can take the same functionality and put Redis here as a graph database through uh, these modules, which I think is pretty powerful. Machine learning model server. So again, you can totally customize the module for your needs if you're using um, uh, machine learning, as well as a specific one for time series as well, time series data, data structure. And there's some other ones out here I'm not going to get into that. Uh, it's not really needed. Um, but I just wanted to show you some of the um, things that where things are going with Redis and where it's at and more recent projects in the world of cryptocurrency in terms of exchange uh, servers as well as um, this multi-processing currency network for something like GDAX. And that hopefully will also help you out. Let me know what you think. Talk to you later.